welcome to our podcast. Uh, thanks for joining us again. We've been working our way through some of the different animals in the Bible, and uh, I hope you've been enjoying this series so far. My name is Tom, and I'm here with Pete and Ben. Hello. Hello. We're pastors at Cornerstone Church, and on cornerstonechurchkingston.org, our website, you can uh, find not just our podcasts, but links to our Sunday services, sermons that you can download, articles that you can read, and uh, other bits and bobs as well. And today, we are going to be thinking about the donkey. Eeyore. Uh, <laughs> spooky. That that was spooky. Time. All of that was spooky. Yeah. 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 I love the donkey. I love a donkey. Yeah. I really do enjoy you don't looking see at see them as much as we would like, do we? Really? Not really. Yeah. I think they're just, they're, they're just they're their head is a very beautiful thing, isn't <laughs> yeah. it? And and then they often have this cross on their back, oh, which right. is quite oh, interesting. Yeah. But we'll come to that, I'm sure. Yeah. There we go. Good point. Well, we're going to begin um, with the Bible. Uh, with the Bible first, and I, th- I well, this definitely is not the first time that the donkey comes up in the Bible, but um, we're going to go to the Ten Commandments because there's um, perhaps a surprising reference to the donkey in the Ten Commandments, isn't there? Mm. Yeah, Who I haven't got it open, so you'll oh, have to read okay, it. Okay, all right, I will. You just do the um, whole thing, mate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this is Exodus 20 and verse 17. This is the Tenth Commandment, and it says, You shall not covet your neighbor's house, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or his manservant or maidservant, his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbour. Uh, so there, the donkey is in the Ten Commandments. What do we? What can we begin to learn about the donkey in the Bible? There. Well, it's a covetable thing. Yeah, uh, people want <laughs> something it. worth having. And if yeah. I haven't got one, I wish I did have mm. one. <laughs> um, I mean, this, it's it, that's the last of the Ten Commandments, isn't it? And that's the one Paul says really convicted him. Mm. If you go to the New Testament, this whole idea of coveting. Because it's a sort of an internal command, mm. isn't it? That you you suddenly realise you're you, you. I mean, coveting isn't just sort of nicely wanting something. Yeah. It's actually wanting someone else's property. So they don't have it. So anymore, they don't have it. But and you I have do. It. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And so you can see a donkey is a valuable thing. And I guess it's a bit like a car mm. uh, or a van or something uh, th- because you get it. It's a beast of burden. It's often called, isn't it? It carries the mm. burden. Um, you know the the weight of you know the the bricks or the or or, or the the, the, yeah. the logs or whatever, um, and so you're covered in it. I have to say, I, when we were we preached the Ten Commandments some years ago, I don't know what it was, and I never really thought about because you think, well, why is it written donkey? You know, why doesn't it say sort of every anything? Mm. But mm. it's specific, isn't it? And I thought I, I've never coveted. My neighbour's donkey, and then I realised I was on a holiday in France, <laughs> and uh, I'd hi- we'd hired this house, and along with the house there was a there was a field, and there was a donkey in the field, and every day I used to go and see the donkey, and it'd come going, ee-oh, ee-oh, and it'd run up to me to the mm. gate, and I'd give it a carrot or something. <laughs> I really loved that donkey, I really <laughs> loved it, yeah. and then I realised I really sort of coveted <laughs> the house and the donkey and the way of life in rural France, how, how lovely it was. So it is actually easy to cover a donkey. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, as you say, like, like a car or a van or a, or a beast of burden, it's clearly something like that, isn't it? Mm. So in an agricultural community, yeah. um, these kinds of animals would have been extremely like, yeah. helpful and yeah. um, would have helped you to have a more productive land and to make more money, I guess, and uh, to at least lighten the load for you and your family. Um, it is and it's harder, put- isn't it? To, sorry, to, to understand that nowadays because yeah. we're, we're, we're not agricultural society and we're actually we're less of a sort of working society we're more um a kind of leisure society mm. so we covet other people's leisure sort of time and activities that, yeah uh rather than oh that's a nice drill i like his drill <laughs> uh you know like yeah. work related items although people like stationery and get quite <laughs> jealous Excited of other people's yeah, but I, I guess I, I guess in in farming world, so farmers don't all have a combine harvester. They have to rent it from the man who owns a combine harvester. Mm. And, uh, and so one farmer in the whole area will have the big gear mm. and then he rents himself mm. out and, and so forth. I guess that may have happened with a donkey. Mm. Not everyone had a donkey, but you wanted to do some work. I'd come to you and say, can I rent your donkey? And I realised that this is a useful animal and I'm mm. flipping annoyed you've got it and I haven't. Yeah, or yours yeah. might be 
old and old. heading to the knackers or you know and uh <laughs> your neighbor's one is a young sort of foal you know and it's got a spring in his step and you might think oh i wish i had that thing running around in my field um so yeah i'm sure i mean it i mean it must have been a temptation otherwise it wouldn't have been named um mm. and it's clearly alongside other working things isn't it like an ox and yep. a servant so um that's anyway so that's you know something of the donkey it's a good thing uh, helped with the labors of the day um other things we can we can turn to other places we can turn to to, to well sort the of great one of the most famous ones well certainly in the old testament is the talking donkey mm. isn't it so uh a lot of people know that a lot of people mock the bible over this don't mm. they say oh look at this this shows you the bible's a lot of nonsense there's a talking donkey mm. it's a phenomenal story i love again love the story and uh, and we were trying to work out what accent the donkey would you know <laughs> is it talking like or like this but uh ben i think you've got it haven't you oh no I haven't. Where was it again? Numbers 22, I think it is. 22. Mm. Yeah, the end of 22. There we go. Balaam's donkey. Uh, it's a fairly long passage. Shall I read it? <laughs> well, read some of it. Read some of it. Okay, so Balaam got up in the morning, saddled his donkey, and went with the Moabite officials. But God was very angry when he went, and the angel of the Lord stood in the road to oppose him. Balaam was riding on his donkey, and his two servants were with him. When the donkey saw the angel of the Lord standing in the road with a drawn sword in his hand, it turned off the road into a field. But Balaam beat it to get back on the road. And the angel of the Lord stood in the narrow path through the vineyards with walls on both sides. When the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, it pressed close to the wall, crushing Balaam's foot against it. So he beat the donkey again. Then the angel of the Lord moved on ahead and stood in a narrow place where there was no room to turn, either to the right or the left. When the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, it lay down under Balaam, and he was angry, and he beat it with his staff. Then the Lord opened the donkey's mouth, and it said to Balaam, What have I done to you to make you beat me these three times? Balaam answered the donkey, You have made a fool of me. If only I had a sword in my hand, I would kill you here and now. Uh, and the conversation goes on, uh, maybe to cut the story short. But the donkey basically says to him, there's been an angel of the Lord standing in the road all of these times. And um, if I'd carried on, you'd be dead. <laughs> and so Balaam repents uh, and says to the Lord, I've sinned. I did not realize you were standing in the road to oppose me. Mm. Um, the donkey saved him. The donkey saved him because the donkey had eyes to see the angel of the Lord. Mm. Uh, and Balaam, the man, didn't. I mean, I think that is something about animals, and that's probably a natural thing. I mean, obviously, the speaking of the donkey is a supernatural, uh, a supernatural event. Mm. You know, God has created um, a larynx or whatever it is, uh, you know, to make it be able to say words when it hasn't got that normally. But the, I think probably the natural thing is that donkeys very often, animals that very often have, you know, they can hear better than us. Often, they can see better than us, smell better than us. And sometimes they have a sense of things that are going on that we, we don't. And lots of people believe that about animals, mm. and I don't see why that isn't true. So the donkey seems to understand, God seems to understand that, he, that his, its master is being foolish yeah. and that there's this danger in the way and it's, it's, <coughs> it's holding back. Mm. It's not just a stubborn old donkey here. No, and that he even goes on to say that. He reasons with Balaam, it's quite funny. He says, um, I, am I not your own donkey, which you have always ridden to this day? Have I been in the habit of doing this to yes. you? Mm. <laughs> it's great reasoning, isn't it? Yeah. It's a very clever donkey. I don't normally do this, so there <laughs> must be a good reason for it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, so what what sort of things are we learning there? So the, so the donkey is clearly, well, like animals you're saying, it's a, there's a kind of uh, a sense you know, well, of but, something but, 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 more. But Balaam... But, is thicker than a donkey. Yeah, yeah. so it's a humbling uh, moment. For it's him, isn't extremely. It? He's yeah. supposed to be some great prophet. Yeah, and he can't even tell when God's speaking. Mm. And the donkey the donkey's does. got more sense. Than the donkey's than got more yeah. sense than the, than him. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so it's a humbling moment for him. Um, so there's there's Balaam's Balaam's ass, as the story is often called. Mm. I mean, that um, is a question, isn't it? I guess. And I, I I know scripture doesn't answer this, but you know, an animal knows its place. And an animal, uh, may, you know, may know about God uh, in in some way, hmm. and is working its way, just following its path as an animal, in bringing glory to God. Hmm. Um, and it just it does its thing, 
in order to bring glory to God. And we are stupid mm. uh, where we think we're independent of God mm. and we don't have to, you know, knuckle under. We mm. don't have to, to listen. Mm. Yeah, because so. Balaam's probably whacking the donkey saying, you stupid animal, you stupid yeah. animal. You can't, you don't know where you're going. Uh, but it reminds me of the um, the spider conversation with, uh, was it um, something Burns? No. Robbie Burns. Robbie Burns, <laughs> yes. yeah. Um, and, the persistent and spider. The persistent spider. In the cave. And he's having a go at the spider saying, you're a disgusting little thing. And he's and the spider says, well, yeah, well, at least I'm doing what God made me to do. Oh, no, that's that, that's another story. Oh, that's, another that's spider. John Bunyan coming John out Bunyan. soon, actually. Yeah, okay, yeah. Mm. yeah. Spoilers. <laughs> um, but yeah, so yeah, the animals are doing what they do. And we've seen that over the series when we looked at the ant. It has no commander, and yet it get car- gets on with the job that God gave it. Um, and so all the animals are doing what they were made to do. Mm. Uh, and yet here's the crown of creation, mankind, mm. blind, more stupid than a donkey, not doing what it's meant mm. to do. Yeah. Mm. And the donkey fears the Lord, doesn't it? Yeah. You know, it knows its place and it knows who's God mm. and it knows who's worth fearing. And, and the animals are talked about like that in the Bible. You know, the ravens cry out to the Lord for their food and that's all part of fearing him and trusting him, isn't it? And, um, you know, that's the contrast, a, a more intelligent, in some ways, much more glorious life form who should know more about fearing the Lord mm. and should be more dependent yeah. um, is less so because yeah. of pride and arrogance. And so, uh, you know, we can learn a lot just by studying the animal, mm. you know, as it's content in its place, doing what God made it to do. Yeah. Um, and, and we can learn um, something about our position, can't we? There, there's, there's the requirement of revelation as well in order to open our blind eyes. Because God is the one, the, the word of the Lord came through the donkey. Mm. Uh, but it was the word of the Lord through the donkey that made Balaam see. Mm. Um, and so we won't, we're all blind Balaams until we hear the word of the Lord. Mm. Um, and it's humbling for us preachers, which mm. we all are around this table. Just you, think you're, you think you're anything good. Yeah. Uh, God can use a donkey for yeah. his mouthpiece. Mm. Yeah. So don't get too cocky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. It's a good reminder. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, so we've thought a bit about the donkey as, um, you know, a beast of burden, as something worth having. Uh, We've seen the donkey's connection here with um, with kind of humility and fear of the Lord. And and actually, um, that's not the only place where a donkey kind of is seen to be a humble creature. And uh, perhaps the most famous use of the donkey in the Bible is um, that the donkey or the, the, the foal of a donkey is used to carry the saviour um, into Jerusalem. So perhaps it's worth turning turning there now as a fulfilment of a prophecy in the Old Testament. Um, perhaps we so. ought to just say before we go there, because there is another very famous, uh, what people think is a use of a donkey. Mm. It's when Mary... When Jesus is about to be born, yeah, and Christmas donkey, so yeah. we probably need to settle that, yeah. Um, and we love the little song, "Little Donkey, Little Donkey," whatever it is. Uh, and uh, it's very hard to get out of your head, <laughs> but there isn't there isn't uh, a donkey mm. in the scriptures mentioned mentioned mm. at the birth of Christ. Now, uh, the the journey I think from um, from uh, uh, Nazareth to Bethlehem that that uh, Mary and Joseph walked while she was pregnant is a five-day journey. So you can imagine him renting a donkey, Mm. uh, perhaps. But they were very poor. And we know they were poor because they only had pigeons to bring when Jesus was born. So they were very, very poor uh, as a sacrifice for the birth of Jesus. Um, So maybe they didn't have a donkey. and Maybe they couldn't even afford to rent one. Mm -hmm. So probably she walked. Mm. But... It's really annoying yeah. because everybody thinks, uh, and I, every year I have to look that up. <laughs> just say, to double check. Just to say, yeah, there isn't yeah. a donkey. Said, no, there isn't a donkey. Yeah, yeah, anyway, you yeah. go to the, f- the one that there is, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, this, this comes up. I don't know what Gospels you've got open there. Um, so certainly in Mark, in Mark chapter 11, uh, Jesus is about to, uh, about to enter Jerusalem. And uh, he's approaching Jerusalem and uh, he sends two of his disciples saying to them, go to the village ahead of you. And just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you doing this? (laughs) Tell them the Lord needs it and will send it back here shortly. They went and found a colt outside in the street, tied at a doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there did ask, what are you doing untying that colt? They answered that Jesus has told them to and the people let them go. 
and uh, then they bring this uh, cult to Jesus. They put their uh, cloaks on it. He sits on it, and then he rides into town on this colt, which is the like the foal of a donkey. And uh, and then the crowds are shouting out, "Hosanna! Save! Here is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Here is the coming kingdom of our father David." So um, it is a triumphal moment. You've got Christ, the coming King, in David's line being celebrated and welcomed and shouted as he uh, comes into Jerusalem and he's on this cult and um, you know that that is a humble thing for a coming king to be riding on isn't mm. it you know you would expect some kind of steed you know a, white a, horse. yeah white horse some kind of mighty procession of uh, chariots and uh, you know those horses that are dressed in golden helmets and they've got red robes on them and, and stuff but he's just riding this uh, this humble beast which mm. says something about who he is yeah. um he is the servant king and uh you know it's not just incidental is it this is actually in fulfillment um of a prophecy um and i think it's zechariah isn't it um yeah. uh, chapter nine um have you got that open are you I don't, sorry. No, I just but it's the... It, I, it, I, it. Sorry, I've got it in Matthew's version. Oh, and then it's quoted. The story, oh, yeah, yeah. It okay, says, yeah. Um, it's, it's Zechariah 9.9, 9, uh, say to the daughters of Zion, see, your king comes to you gentle mm. and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Which, is, which is, I think, probably uh, telling us that this thing hadn't even been trained yet. Mm. So you try and jump on the colt of a donkey, and it will kick you. Kick you. I mean, donkeys are good at kicking. Yeah. Um, but you've got the Lord here uh, in all kinds of ways. He knows the donkey's there. He tells the the, the, the disciple exactly what's going to happen, where the donkey is, who's mm. going to come out and ask mm. the question, and all of that happens. And this unridden donkey he rides on. Yeah. So he is a master. Yeah, yeah. But it's a very humble thing to be to be riding on. Mm -hmm. It's so consistent with the rest of Jesus's life where he doesn't take the place of honor and he doesn't um, dress himself particularly sort of ornamentally. He doesn't, he, he says, you know, foxes have holes, uh, but the son of man has nowhere to lay his head. Mm. Um, so he, he doesn't even have a home really. Uh, and this is, this is, this is right in, in, in line with how he's living in this world. He's come not to be served, but to serve. Um, and so he's he's humbly riding in, mm. even though he's a king, even though he is the king. Mm -hmm. um, you know, see your king comes to you on a donkey. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, really amazing. Yeah, yeah. And if you look at a donkey, I think. Yeah, I mean, we'll probably bring this out in the kids' one, but you should go and look at the donkey. Look at the back of a donkey, and it's got a cross on it, mm. which is rather a lovely thing. Mm. And we recently heard a bloke say, didn't we, that. Um, our job as preachers is to be like this donkey. Right. Um, Who said that? It was a bloke on Star Focus. Anyway. Oh, right. He said, uh, was it Die Hanky? No, someone else. Mm -hmm. um, he said that whenever we preach, all we're doing is presenting Jesus to daughter Zion. Brilliant. We're saying, see, you know, see your king comes to you. Mm. Yeah. Riding on a donkey, the donkey is the means by which Jesus enters Jerusalem. Mm. But there's nothing special about the donkey. And mm. to be honest, forget the donkey. Yeah. Mm. You're, you're, the donkey's job is to ride Jesus in and present him and then, and then sort of return back where it came. Mm. Uh, and so every time a preacher steps up on, onto a, a, a sort of a platform or a pulpit, Really, they're just the donkey bringing Christ to you mm -hmm. as the congregation listening, mm. which, is a, which is a wonderful reminder for us. It, again, we saw earlier, um, God can even speak through a donkey. Well, that, actually, that's exactly what he's doing yeah. through us. Mm. We are just donkeys. Um, yeah. Nothing special about us. Uh, but Christ is the jewel that we're sort of walking into town and presenting to you. Mm. Um, yeah, thought that was a helpful. Under the cross of Christ on our back. Under yeah. the cross of Christ, yeah. 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 Maybe Very we good. should talk a bit like donkeys, you know. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Try to slowly bring that in. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome <laughs> to <laughs> the <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> all right. Okay. So um, good stuff there. Uh, other other sort of little stories that might just, we don't have to spend as long on perhaps. No, no, no. But, but uh, well, you can go back fun. to the Old Testament. You yeah. Samson. Yeah. Uh, who kills a whole load of people. I mean, he was a funny bloke, Samson. Yeah. It's quite hard to get your head around him. Because uh, he is a man of faith, or at least eventually he is, but um, he he seemed to have an appetite for fighting and mm. women and stuff and it? poetry. He would write a little poem about all of the big things yes. that he did. Yes, a little riddle. Yeah, yes, a he liked riddle. riddles. Yeah, he? he did. Um, 
and he grabs uh, the jaw of a donkey, uh, a, um, a dead donkey, uh, of a dead donkey. Mm. Yeah, so uh, a jawbone. Sorry, the jawbone mm. of a, a of a donkey, dead donkey, and goes out and kills a thousand people, isn't it? A thousand Philistines. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. In my in the contemporary English version, the Kev, which is the Bible translation <laughs> I had when I was growing up, um, uh, the poem went like this. Uh, he he said this. With a donkey's jawbone, I killed a thousand men. I hit them with this jawbone over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> I used to really enjoy that. Brilliant. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's quite an impressive feat, it's isn't it? To be honest with you, I mean, yeah. um, it's not much to do with a donkey, other than it's just a jawbone, isn't it? Really? Yeah, yeah it's more to yeah. do with. But the power, I guess, it's an illustration of the power of the Lord, isn't it? And the it, Lord used him it, a donkey. Y- yeah, yeah. And the, what's the most? But you know, if you're going to go into battle against a thousand men, surely you want the best armor, you want the best weapon, you want the sharpest sword, you want the best shield. And all he had was a jawbone of a dead donkey, and mm. yet he yeah. was still able to in the power it, of the and, Lord. I know, and I mean the actual verse. This is Judges 15. I mean, you can see, um, you know, there's something about something about it in which he's humbled them as well by doing that. So um, <laughs> this is what a book judges is. As he approached Lehi, the Philistines came towards him shouting, the spirit of the Lord came upon him in power. The ropes on his arm became like charred flax and the bindings dropped from his hands. Finding a fresh jawbone <laughs> of a donkey, <laughs> he grabbed it and struck down a thousand men. Then Samson said, with a donkey's jawbone, I've made donkeys of them. <laughs> 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 with a donkey's jawbone, I've killed a thousand men. When he had finished speaking, he threw the jawbone away. Um, so in, in other words, that to be made to be made into a donkey is to be humbled, isn't it? Yeah. You know, he's, yeah. Uh, he's absolutely, basically pulled their pants down, hasn't he? Really? Yeah. That's what is saying you know yeah. he's, he's killed a thousand men with a daughter jawbone yeah. um so that's a there's, a, there's another use of the donkey if you go back to the new testament this time and that's the famous uh parable story that jesus tells of the good samaritan mm. and uh so you've got that story of the religious people too busy to help a man who's been beaten up uh by the side of the road mm. but uh, the good samaritan uh, comes along and sees this man beaten up, basically almost dead, and he puts him on his donkey, mm. and he takes him, and 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 uh, so the donkey again is taking the the burden of a dead man, yeah, uh, to life. Yeah, he's like a savior, isn't he? Really? Yeah, 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 yeah. And the the religious people refuse to take that burden on themselves because mm. um, they're too important and they've got places to go or whatever else. So that's a lovely story, isn't it? Um, it's very faithful, a donkey, isn't it? They're not. Yeah, you know they're they're depicted as just they they know their place in the world and they're just getting on. Yeah, yeah. Do you think? I mean, where does the fr- I know a mule is a different creature, but stubborn as a mule. Oh yeah, there's well, obviously they are, some kind of like yeah. They, I think they can stop to them, and yeah. then they won't <laughs> they move. Won't move. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. yeah it's, Perhaps yeah. they're seeing the angel of the Lord. Well, that's a good question to yeah. ask, isn't it? Um, maybe Why? they are, and we just I mean we we don't know. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And I, I guess it has come from from Balaam's story, stubborn as a as a, mm. a don- well, it is donkey as well. Um, mm. And I think the Lord, oft, like sometimes, I don't know if it's exactly that phrase, but it may well be, often compares his people to like horses and mules that can't be turned, doesn't yeah. he? So even though he's pulling on their reins, mm. stiff neck, graciously yeah. trying to get them to turn back to his word and his promises, they will not have their heads moved, you know. Mm. And so there's a sort of sinful stubbornness, isn't there? And uh down yeah. at when the when the donkeys were down in the pits in in um, in Wales uh, uh, during the revival in Wales in in the the nineteenth uh, and twentieth century, uh, you know the, the the men that were down the pits down the mines used to swear at the donkeys, and uh, and they got used to that. You know they, they would just use foul language mm. to get the donkey doing its job, but when those men got converted. And turned to Christ, they stopped swearing, mm. and the donkeys didn't know what the orders <laughs> meant. They just stopped and didn't do anything. So that was a that was a reason for a donkey stopping for for sort of good reasons. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> I hadn't. I don't think I'd ever clocked to that stiff necked was a reference to the neck of a horse or a mm. donkey trying to be turned. Yeah, it won't be moved. Mm. Yeah. I don't really know why I've never thought of that before. I just thought it was sort of stubborn. For yeah, but that makes so much more sense to me now. Yeah, stiff necked. Yeah. So when you see a donkey, yes, you can talk to it. Yeah. There's uh, another donkey that I just thought okay. of. Okay. Yeah. Which is in C.S. Lewis's Last Battle. Oh yeah. Um, puzzle. Yeah. Puzzle, yeah. Puzzle. Who it is to be a lion? Yeah. So he's a donkey, and um, who is the the one of the who's monkey. the bad guy? Oh uh, yeah, the, the ape. Monkey. Yeah. The ape. Yeah. The ape. He he throws a lion skin on top of the donkey to make him look like Aslan. Yeah. And to get people to follow him and to listen to him. Uh, but Puzzle doesn't actually know what's going on, does he? No. That's why he's called Puzzle. He's puzzled. Yeah. Um, and bless him, he doesn't actually sort of know the evil thing that he's doing because the ape is whispering in his ear and telling him what to do. Um, but uh, but yeah, I suppose um, we can get ordinary things dressed in uh, sort of spectacular things, but underneath they're sort of false and fake idols, aren't they? Mm. So um, are the things we're living for, are they... Are they actually the real deal or are they just a donkey covered in a lion skin? Mm. Mm. You got me thinking about donkeys and mules and all kinds of stories now. Yeah, so Eeyore, I think we should look at a donkey, yeah. talk to a donkey, see whether it, it might be related to the Balaam's donkey, might not it? Yeah. It might know that story, Yeah. so ask it. Mm. Uh, look at its back, see the cross on its back. Remember that it carried Jesus mm -hmm. and it carried uh, the one who was going to... Because, well, that's another story about a donkey. So that w one of the first, that's a good, good one, uh, one of the first bits of graffiti uh, yeah. uh, against Christianity is, um, is, the, is the idea that there was a donkey on the yeah. cross yeah. and they have a the donkey head on Christ on the cross right. because they're saying that Jesus is just a servant. Mm. And uh, go and worship your God, it says, mm. doesn't it, uh, in the graffiti. It's a very famous bit of graffiti, mm, one of the mm. early bits of graffiti. So Jesus is like a donkey. He carries our burden. He carries our sin mm. on the cross mm. and deals with it so that we can be forgiven. So there's a lot in a donkey. Yeah. So I would... I Try not to one. covet it, but do enjoy it. Yeah. I think, yeah, <laughs> and learn from it. The trouble is, if you did covet it, where are you going to put it? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. You need a decent garden, don't you? Yeah. Um, there we go uh, that's the donkey hope you enjoyed it and um, and uh, do tune in because we're going to release another one of these as usual a shorter version which you can listen to with kids if you've uh, if you've uh, got a fact got a family um, so do tune in and cornerstonechurchkingston.org is is uh, as I say the place for all those other resources and uh, do make use of those thank you <laughs>